Welcome to today's class. Today I'll be focusing more on uh, development of specification of goods, works and services. And your presenter is uh, Daniel Misitandigua. So by the end of this uh, lesson, you will be able to understand some of the critical areas in specification of goods, works and services. So the team is uh, procuring of goods, works and services or any combination thereof in obtaining value for money. Remember when you are specifying goods, you need to get value for your money. Value for your money basically is applicable both in public sector and private sector. The essence is to ensure that what you bring into the organization is something that is going to be good to the organization. The result basically is uh, reduced to five objectives of procurement and this includes procurement of the right quantity made available at the right time to satisfy the demand adequately, hence the right quantity delivered at the site of use in the right place and subject to the right uh, place. The other thing is that you must ensure the right price. Remember price is very critical when it comes to the issues of specification. This is because at the end of the day, you want to reduce on cost of your organization. After understanding all that, you must be able to know the definition of a specification. A specification, these are exact needs to be satisfied in an organization. Remember when you're buying, there are those needs or characteristics that you require in a particular product. Those characteristics are very, very crucial when it comes to, in, that is very critical in the aspect of ensuring that you're able to achieve So when you are writing your specification, sometimes it is always important to ensure that all the parties are involved when you're coming up with that specification. The other important thing that we must talk about today is the issue of the purpose of the specification. One of the purpose is to describe the quality and quantity of different materials that are required in your organization. It is important to ensure that what you are going to so you'll be able to also to specify the methods of carrying out the job. It is also important to serve as a guide to the supervisor on how to inspect the works. The other thing that is very important is to determine how much the contractor is going to be paid and the expectation in terms of the work done and the work that is required. You also need to understand the specific, the specific equipment or tools that need to be engaged so that the work that you are going to do is going to be effective. You also need to help in verifying and checking the strength of material for the work. And lastly, you must be able to minimize your risks and the costs, as well as the specified amount that you really need. The other thing that we'll be talking about today is the types of specification. We have various types of specification, and the first one is descriptive specification. This normally describes the physical features of or requirements that are needed in a particular item. They normally give the height, the breadth or the length, the quantified uh, weight or the, the kilograms or the volumes. The other thing is the material input or material specification. Basically, in this type of specification, it tends to give the quantity or the quality of ingredients that are required to make a particular items. Basically, it shows some of the inputs. And when we talk about inputs, inputs are divided into two. We have the tensile strength and the composition. The tensile strength is all about the grades on how strong a requirement is and the level of such strength that influences the durability of a product. For example, when you're buying a motor vehicle, you also need to check on the size of the tires that you're going to use on that motor vehicle. The other important thing is the composition. You also need to check the composition. The product can not only be physically described, but also the composition that ensures that you're able to come up with this, that product successfully. Basically here you check the nature of the material that you are going to use when you are coming up with the specification. 
We also need to consider the capacity. Various needs are required to perform to a specific task. Under capacity, basically you check on the requirements that need to be satisfied and the expected categorization of performance. The other important uh, type is the samples. Here, basically, you need to provide a sample of material. And it is very common when you're dealing with clothing materials. Basically, you need to come up with a sample on how well you want the clothes to look like. The other one is the by use. Under this, uh, the Kenyan law, basically, goods sold must be in uh, merchantile quality. The goods that you're going to sell that must be in a position or they must be sellable. So in the usage specification, the main focus in, is on how you are going to use those items. The other important one is the design and drawings. This is very common in architectural works. When you are coming with designs on various categories, let's say buildings and water view, you must ensure that you use uh, the design or drawing specification. <clears throat> The other one, basically, when you're coming up with the various uh, specification purposes or memor memorial designs, or when you're also doing some landscaping designs or other designs, this type of specification is very, very common. The other one is standard specification. This type of specification basically uses recurrent times. They are hence filed for future purchases. Basically, do you set a particular standard, a uniform standard that is going to be used in your organization for a particular time or a particular duration. So that standard is what basically is going to guide you when you're coming up with a specification. The other one is performance specification. Under performance specification, what normally happens is that the organization basically checks on how the product is going to perform in the market. They are not concerned with how the product is made, but basically on how the product is going to perform or the contribution of that product in the market. The other important thing is um, material content. So basically what I'm talking about is the categories of specification where we have standard category, we have performance category, we also have material content or texture specification, and uh, we also have technical design and measurement specification. Under material or content or texture, basically it gives a detail or a write-up of what a material contains. Basically it is used when you're making a product or service or works. Basically you can decide to use it for building a bridge or maybe you need some requirements on the sands that you require, the cement, the water and water view. The other one is technical or design or measurement specification. Under these, it gives a detailed information about the qualitative and quantitative characteristics. Basically, it is used when you're coming up with technical products where you need to ascertain the weight, you need to ascertain the usage and the instructions that are very critical when you are designing a house or when you're designing a particular road. Then the other one or the other category is result oriented specification. This involves informing the potential suppliers on the intended objective to be obtained, mostly in procurement of services and consultancy service. So this is basically based on the result of or the outcome at the end of the day. The other important one is conformance specification. Under this, the user of the product gives a detail of exactly what is required on a particular product or what a product consists. Basically, is that product able to conform to the various requirements of the user? The other one is interface specification. This gives a detailed information that contains the user software interface. It also contains all the details of actions, visuals or interactions or elements and an end user may perform an interface. So basically it gives a breakdown on how a particular product is going to be used. The visual basically it can give a video on how a product or service is going to be used. What are some of, who are some of the stakeholders? A stakeholder is any person who is affected by the organization actions, policy, or even objectives. And in this case, stakeholders can either be creditors, customers, employees, shareholders, 
or suppliers. The following parties must be involved in specification development. Number one is the user of the product. The person who is going to use the product or the user department must be involved when you're coming up with a specification. The other important one is the procurement unit. You must involve the procurement department when you're coming up with a specification. You must also involve the marketing, the management of an organization. The top managers must be involved when you're coming up with a specification on a particular product or a service. The other one is the research and development department. Remember there are the people who go out, outside there and trying to gather information about items. So basically you must ensure that they are also involved. You also need to involve the finance department because they are the people who advise on the budget of a particular organization. So it is always critical to involve those people at the end of the day. So what are some of the risks that are involved in specification? The first one is the seller's risk. The, and the seller's risk is always referred to as the type one error. Basically, the seller sometimes might either accept or reject your item. And that is normally referred to as the acceptable quality level of material or service. The other one is the buyer's risk, also called a type, uh, type two error which involves the rejectable quality level. Sometimes the buyer can reject an item based on the fact that the item did not meet the standard. And the third one is the acceptance rejection plan. This is basically an evaluation of the potential risks that can either emanate from accepting a product or not accepting a product. Basically the risks that are involved when it comes to specification that might lead either to accepting something or rejecting that thing. Thank you for listening. Hope uh, you've uh, learned something. And in case you have any question, always feel free to ask.